I'm Michelle Smith, and you're listening to Gather Voices, the podcast aimed at helping you discover and create a beautiful, inspired life through community, conversation, and design. You can find more at the Gather Goods Co. online shop at gathergoodsco.com, and if you're in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, you can visit in person at our shared studios, showroom, and classroom space. Just let me know ahead of time so that I can make sure that I'm there. And if you like this podcast, please tell your friends, leave a review, and subscribe. It really helps get the word out, and it helps others to find us. Today, I want to talk about the idea of active mental rest and what that looks like. It's really hard for us to just stop doing what we're doing. When we are exercising and we work our muscles they get tired and fatigued. And if you are doing it right, then you're not exercising actively, aggressively every day. You're also taking active rest days. And so I think the same thing needs to apply to our mental health as well. If you have stretched your muscles and you're growing them, they're going to grow stronger and more healthy and you're going to get more benefits from it if you take an active rest day after, after you do some hard work. What active rest looks like in a physical sense is doing activities that are a little bit lesser impact. So yoga or Tai Chi or swimming or going for a walk. But the same thing I think applies to us mentally as well. And I don't think we often do this, especially when we are so often consumed with social media we're watching whatever show or listening to whatever podcast we're listening to, we get mentally taxed because we take in all of the news of the day and then we have our own work that we have to do. Maybe we're parents. We just get mentally fatigued. So one of the things that's really important for us is not to necessarily just completely do the opposite, which I think most of us have a tendency to do. We go, okay, I have overworked myself. Now I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to veg out on the couch. Or you're going to scroll passively through social media. I mean, all of us do this. And it's our natural tendency. Again, we just want to do the opposite. But what's more important is that we take time to do active mental rest. So what does that look like? Part of what it looks like is having productive hobbies that don't necessarily relate to the other things that we're working on. They're not tied to making money. They're not tied to expectations around what they're going to produce for other people. The simple act of just doing something that engages our brain but allows us to disconnect from the thing that we've been doing before. It's like the idea of when you are going for a walk or when you're in the shower and you all of a sudden are flooded with a bunch of different ideas. There's a lot of great thinkers who have gone, go for daily walks and that helps them to process things. So that's the way our brain works. That's why we go to sleep, right? Because we need to recharge our batteries. We need to sweep away all the brain debris and thinking that we've been thinking about. That's why it's extra important to get a lot of really good quality sleep. There's a book that came out recently that I highly recommend. It's called Burnout, and they talk a lot about this in the book. So there's a lot of really good practical strategies. There's nothing necessarily super revolutionary in the book if you're already familiar with this concept, but it is a really good one with some really practical steps. I do this a lot. When I get overwhelmed, oftentimes I find myself putting in my headphones, listening to a long-form audiobook, something that I can engage with that's not just a few 20-minute snippets here and there making me think of something else. I listen to an audiobook. I paint a wall or I paint like a dresser. I do something where I have to spend hours and hours and hours engaged in something. Another activity that I do is I will try to shut off my work at around 3 o'clock when my daughter's done with school. And, you know, a lot of times I do housework, stuff like that. But another thing I do is I try to cook. And so for me, obviously, I know for a lot of people, that's a, this is a luxury, right, to be able to cook as pleasure. But for me, making a big pot of soup, making something out of leftovers, spending that time, again, oftentimes I'll have my headphones in listening to something that I wouldn't otherwise be listening to. Now, again, if you're really trying to do active rest, you are 
disconnecting a little bit more than that. But I find for me, I start thinking about some of the things that I was working on before. My brain allows me to process things. I get really great ideas and I feel relaxed and recharged and I feel productive, right? But when I find myself sitting in front of the TV or just like doom scrolling, I'm definitely, I feel bad and worse afterwards. The same thing applies to when we work out, right? We work out, if we don't do any little thing, oftentimes it's harder for us to get back to the pace that we were at before. So some of the really good ways to activate active um, rest mentally are to, like I said, come up with a hobby. Things that are especially good are things that are repetitive in nature. So things like knitting or embroidery or kneading dough or kneading clay. These are all really good things to do that allow you to actually use your hands as a tool. So I think that we were actually made to use our hands as tools. And so often we're, we're not doing that. So often we're looking on the computer, we are using our brains, but we actually need to use our bodies as well. I like to garden. I like to plant seeds. I like to watch them grow. I like to get my hands in the dirt. And all of this active motion allows me to unplug, recharge, and generate new ideas and also to finish the ideas that are in my head. I always tell my, my daughter that I'm going out in the garden to untangle my brain. And, and it's true. Like when I work in the garden for an extended period of time, usually by myself, 35, 40 minutes, by the time you get to the 35, 40 minute, you feel things feel clarified. You're able to all the like fuzzy overwhelm that you feel in your head just suddenly clears. I think it's the benefit of being outside and getting that good vitamin D, but it's also that active, that active rest time. You know, I try to aim for a daily walk because walking does the same thing like I talked about, but there are other ways you can do it at home. So one thing that I like to do is I like to listen to uh, bird sound soundtracks or just classical music in the background. Well, you know, when I listen to that stuff, it makes me feel good from a sensory perspective. But it's not taking all my attention, like changing a new song every couple minutes. So those are good things to do. Other things that are good that you can do, you can do a puzzle. You could actively daydream. This one is really hard for me. I think it's hard for a lot of us. One of the things that happens when we are too mentally fatigued and too busy in general, we lose the ability to dream or we don't give ourselves permission to dream. We are so often engaged in so many things in our brain. We're always trying to solve so many problems that we can't create a new image in our head. So the reason we can't do that is, is we're not engaging enough in this active rest. Our brain needs that in order to, to regenerate. There is an idea. It's called passive constructive daydreaming. And the idea behind it is to mindfully set aside time and literally daydream. Because when we do that, when we think about the future, it gives us hope, it gives us motivation, and it's good for our brain. It helps us to actually activate parts of our brain that allow us to set goals, and we're more likely to achieve those goals when we can actually visualize them. So as silly as it sounds, set aside time to actually actively daydream. Other things that are really good for this period of active rest are things like playing music. You get into a flow state in your brain. And whether it's just like playing a guitar, playing piano, or learning a new instrument, all of that does really great things for your brain. I like to collage. I like to cut out pieces of magazines and create it into a new thing. It doesn't really have any purpose other than the collage itself. It's a way for my hands to move, my brain to disconnect. You could paint. Painting would be a really great thing as well. Journaling is also really great because it allows us to get in touch with our emotions that are otherwise hidden below the surface. So for some of us, we can access those emotions easier than others. For many of us, we need to see our words reflected back at us to really understand the world. So for me, when I write in my journal, I am able to get those aha moments that I wouldn't otherwise get. There is a famous book called The Artist's Way. And it really talks about creating a daily practice. And part of the daily practice is 
writing three longhand pages a day just to get all of that stuff out of your brain so that you have more space for the creativity and the other things you want to pursue. So that's definitely a great practice. I don't think that for me it's sustainable on a daily basis, but it's definitely something I get back to occasionally. And when I do, I always see the benefits of it. So it's definitely something to pursue at different stages of life. I also have an occasional daily reflection journal. So I actually reflect on a series of questions and I only answer like, I I basically give myself three lines and I answer those things. So one of them is like, what would I, what would make me happier if I did today, make me happier for tomorrow? Three gratitudes, three challenges, three things that I learned. I mean, you could go whatever you feel like you want to reflect on, but it creates time and space and time and space is what we're actually looking for, right? We feel so overwhelmed. Our attention is just taken by so many things that we just don't stop. I have another thing that I really enjoy doing. I have bird feeders outside my window. And when I fill them up, because I have to fill them up often because the birds really love the food that's there, it reminds me to watch them, to sit and watch them. Doing something like watering my plants reminds me to take care of something outside of myself. And those are all good practices to just sit. We don't just sit very often, but I think that it's important to find time to find a little stillness and just sit and see what happens. I know a lot of us are afraid of being still because when we're still, a lot of the bad feelings and the thoughts creep in. But the more you do it, the more you will start to be able to separate the anxiety and the overwhelm from the the goodness that comes from it. So... Another great thing that you can do is breath work. There are a lot of apps out there that help lead you through breathing in a specific manner that helps your heart rate drop and helps put you in that relaxed flow state. So one that I like to use is called breathe. Also meditation. Meditation is great. It's hard for some of us to do it. It's easier than others. It's hard for all of us when we first start meditating. Start with five minutes, work your way up to 15 minutes. When you meditate, you will notice that your brain starts thinking of a hundred different things at once. That's because it's not used to being still. The more you do it, the more you separate your thoughts and your emotions from who you are, then the more you start to recognize that these thoughts and emotions really aren't who you are. They're just a part of life that you're experiencing, and you have the ability to disconnect yourself from those. So it's a really, really amazing practice. I highly recommend it. Again, I don't do it daily. I do it when I can. But it has been shown that if you meditate for more than 15 days in a row, it changes the brain chemistry in your brain that makes you more able to handle stress and gets you in a more zen state of mind just in general in your day-to-day, even when you're not meditating. So I highly recommend trying it, even if it feels a little out there. I use a really great app. It's Australian. It's called Smiling Mind, and it's free. It also has meditations for kids as well as adults. And you can choose your time limit, whether you want to do five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. It really helps walk you through all those steps. So those are some tools that I use. I hope that you have felt encouraged to create some active rest time for yourself and that you see the value in it and that you seek it out in your day to day, you know, can you do it, have some active rest time every day? Can you, you know, don't wait until it's too late until you have burnt yourself out until you have just, you know, burned the candles at all ends, and you just feel so overwhelmed to do it, try to make it a daily practice. What does it look like for you? So I've given you lots of tips and suggestions. And hopefully, from those, you will create your own ideas of what you can do to create some active rest in your life. If you would like to download the daily journal prompts guide that I was talking about, I've created a free PDF. You can go to community.gathergoodsco.com backslash resources, and you'll be able to download that for free. 
Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, please tell your friends, subscribe so that you'll know about new content. I'm Michelle Smith, and this is the Gather Voices podcast.